Hi guys, hope you're well. I'm out in the rain. I've just come back from filming a new series of pieces with Chelsea, Stoke and Arsenal legend, Alan Hudson. Alan tells it exactly like it is. He's very entertaining. So here we are, Alan with Brendan McGurr and myself talking about Chelsea, talking about Man City, how good they are and how Bobby Charlton was a right old moaner. Hi folks, and uh, here we are back with the legend, the legend that is Alan Hudson, Chelsea, Stoke, Arsenal, Seattle, Sounders, and we've also got Brendan McGurr, haven't we? <laughs> Who's not, I've any of them former places. <laughs> who, who were your teams, Brendan? Who did you play for? Uh, St. Columbus and Kent County. <laughs> it's not bad. It's not a bad <laughs> resume. So, Alan, what did you think? Uh, City won the Premiership. What do you think? Well, everyone's going nuts, aren't they? You know, I mean, it's a fantastic achievement. But I, I, when I heard that... Uh, they're the best team ever. I'm sure Sir Alex would have something to say about that. I, I think Ferguson's team was better than this Man City team. Uh, and I think people like Roy, Roy Keane would agree with me. Eric Cant and I would agree with me. Uh, although he didn't play too much in the later days, Brian Robson would have agreed with me. They would have beat this Man City team, uh, no problem. Do you think the Liverpool team of the 70s would have competed with them, though, like when they was at their height? Yeah, I do, yeah. Under Shankly and, and then Paisley, but yeah. they, they were fabulous teams. Weren't they fabulous teams? Yeah, weren't they? Yeah. They were like a machine, yeah. weren't they? Really? And, and after all, they haven't won the European Cup, they're not going to win the Champions League, so, you know, it's uh, that's kind of a, a smokescreen, isn't it? Yeah. The, the, we are the best in the world. Yeah. Um, they have apparently got about 150 charges from the Fair Play League <laughs> yeah. coming out. They could be expelled out of the Premiership, apparently, I read yesterday. So so which the, won't happen. How would the Chelsea team, you know, the Osgoods and yourself and all that, uh, fared up against Man City? On, on the day when our defenders were up, I mean, I played in a team where a couple of defenders were getting uh, past their sell-by date. But at, at their peak, uh, I think they people like... Foden, uh, they wouldn't have got the space and the joy that they get, they're get. they getting in today's game. Um, we had a tough back four, and uh, even going back to Stoke, you know, they wouldn't get away, they wouldn't get away, they wouldn't get that kind of space. I know great players make space, and Pep's a great manager, they won four on the spin, but I don't really believe that this has been a great league this year. You know, when you see Aston Villa have come fourth and they get beat 5-0 yeah. yesterday, right, they got yeah. beat 4-0 a couple of weeks ago. You know, they've kind of... And then they're going to Europe and get slaughtered by a Greek team. You know, you've got to be a big question mark about the Premier Premier League. How good it is. So how, how good was the Chelsea back four? You know, was Ron Harris as tough as it, it was all made out? Well, let's just say I played against him about six times when I moved on. And I always made sure that I was on the other side of the field. <laughs> uh, being a midfield player and an inside forward at Stoke, and I could choose where I went. I could do. Uh, my manager would give me carte blanche, uh, and I wouldn't be silly enough to go near Ron. I um, turn my back on him. That's the key to it all. Uh, and he marked people like Jimmy Greaves and Dennis Law, and but they had to play with their back to him, and uh, that was when he was his most dangerous. You don't turn your back on them people. And, and Eddie McCready? But he was tough. If you put a ball against, that against the wall, I mean, I'm not sure who would come out on top. He was, he, he had trunks, legs like trunks. Uh, what, what? Eddie McCready was one of your great mates, wasn't he, at Chelsea? And he was a great defender. Wasn't he? he was one of my all-time great mates, and we were very close. I, I was very fortunate at Chelsea. I don't know if we'd done it, Brent, on the last uh, cast, but... Um, I was in the dressing room when I was 13, 14, through my inju early injury, and I was around these lads, you know, and I know who treated me well, and I knew it was all right then, you know, and who I trusted and who I didn't. Yes. Um, so I was lucky that I loved Eddie. I, I loved, the, you know, uh, I, there's this story that they don't believe me, but I used to, when I was on, I was on like, duty all the time whereas I only used to do it every Monday or every other Monday or whatever and I used to clean their boots myself but the ones I'd like I'd clean their shoes and I'd sparkle them That's up. wicked because I was going to ask you today who was the people you cleaned the boots for when you was a kid so that's 
That's perfect that you said that. <laughs> well, you know, but that's what you do for your favourite people, yeah. don't you? And uh, it was around the time, um, I think it was Marvin Hint and I cleared Peter Osgood, Peter Bonetti, who were really good to me, Eddie McCready, Johnny Ball was my great friend, people like that, you know, and the others would come in and they'd, they'd, once they've had their shower and put their shoes on, uh, they would see the difference. You know? <laughs> and they'd say, what's all this about, young Hudson? And, uh, young Hudson. and then a little bit later on, uh, Tony Hately came and I was doing the boots one day and uh, he was arrogant. I mean, we, we were great players they ch around Chelsea that time. They were great players, and I was a Fulham sport. We had Johnny Haynes, you know. So, you know, they, they, but great people, you know. And I come out of the boot room this day, and uh, Tony Hately, he, he had this thing. He was mopped all his hair back with his comb, and he's got his towel wrapped round. He's walking round like Sylvester Stallone, I can only say. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, he went, "Son, come here." He said, go over the road and get me a pint of milk. And we never kept milk in the dress room. It was either champagne or tea or coffee. And uh, he, I can only say that he's still waiting for the milk. <laughs> you know, it's as simple as that, you know. It was just so rude, you know, and so, you know, the, they didn't treat, good people don't treat the kids like that. And I've, all, I've always thought when I got, it's just the way I am anyway, whatever club I went on, even on to Seattle, I always looked after the kids. You've got to look after the kids, you know. It was great when I was looking at your book, that there were a few other players that you were critical of who were a bit uh, arrogant, uh, you know. Was, uh, do you think Rodney Marsh, you said something about him wanting to look in the mirror all the time? Well, yeah, they say never meet your idol, and, and I did, he was not my idol at Fulham, you know, because he'd come on the scene and he, he was a terrific player. I remember his first game, he played against Aston Villa. I remember his first goal was against Aston Villa. And, I, and then he moved on to QPR and I followed QPR while he was there. And then I got in the first team at Chelsea and he signed for Man City just by the time I signed for Stoke. I was much bigger fee than him. <laughs> and, uh, and he said, let's meet down the King's Road and have a drink. And I, but that was it, finished. I had scrapbooks for them all the way and all this kind of stuff, you know. Not my kind of people. You know, it's, you don't, you, 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 football's only a game, you're only, we are what we are. And I think you take pride of what your performance, but don't carry it out there. Don't go in the street with it, you know. Was there, was there any um, special like uh, rituals that they went through before games, some of the teams you played in? Was there anything that like was a bit different or, did you have to do any initiation stuff when you went to certain clubs? Did they have anything like that? Some of them old school people, did they have their little funny ways before a game? You know what no, I mean? the, only, the only thing that did surprise me when I went to Stoke was that they had a bottle of scotch and a bottle of whiskey next to the door as you go out the swing doors. And that, I'd never seen it before, but at that time I was 23, 24, 23, been in the game five years, one played in Europe one and everything else and it's and they swigging the whiskey and the brandy and one of our players just couldn't get out of his hand a fellow called Jackie Marge he was like uh, you know he needed this yeah, yeah. to go out on the field you know because he lacked a bit of confidence that kind of threw me uh, I didn't need it because that would have been a livener for me <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But no, it, it, but well, it's, old Bestie would have loved to play there, didn't he? Well, George wouldn't have. George wouldn't have had none of that. He would have, he'd have been out on the field, wouldn't he? <laughs> well, was there a rumour that he was going to go to Chelsea at one point? Well, it wasn't a rumour. It was the truth. It was. Um, I remember we used to go in his nightclub uh, in Manchester. Uh, as I've said, we we always looked at our fixing list at the beginning of the season and said, "That's Andy playing Manchester United on a Wednesday night." So it was Wednesday night, stay over, George. And uh, I mean, he was he was a top man at that time. Good host you know? as well, I should think. How was he? Well, he was. Uh, I think about George. He wasn't. You know, you made if it was Hollywood. He, you know, he'd meet you at the door. You know, and look a million dollars and was bird on each arm. But that wasn't George. He was just so lovely. You know, and just one, just next door neighbour. I mean, he lived down the King's Road later on and. 
we used to bump into each other. But I never had his phone number, he never had mine. So it was that kind of relationship. But whenever we see each other, it's always a pleasure and we go and have a drink together or I go into Feeney to see him or go and find him. If uh, going in Crawford Street, went at his club to see him. Uh, just a great fella and he always was delighted to see you, you know. Really. So you, um, one of his teammates, Bobby Charlton, I remember that you weren't so impressed with Bobby Charlton, were you, when you played with him, played against him rather? No, I think uh, what it is, it's um, like with all of us, it's first impressions, isn't it? You know, that's what we have. And um, the first time I played against Manchester United at the bridge, um, we always used to beat them, funnily enough, the home and away. And that went on even after the teams later. They just had to sign yeah, over. Yeah, they did have a yeah, good great, record against them. Yeah, great record against them. But and all, I could just remember Bobby always moaning to the referee, moaning about moaning about everything. I thought we was moaning about his haircut. It's <laughs> a crafty comb over. <laughs> well, you know, I'm probably looking at looking at George and thinking, "You lucky bastard! You, know, you get hair like that. How do you look like that?" But. Um, and, I, and that was just the way it was, and every time I played against them, Old Trafford, and then again we played, he played his last match at the Bridge, didn't he? And it I was, was like, I was there. Yeah. yeah. Did, did you, you played against Jack as well, I would imagine, his brother? Well, playing is not the same <laughs> word, is it? Jack was out on the field, wasn't he? He, he, he didn't play, he was just out there, wasn't he? <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, as a kid growing up, I really liked Jack listening to him and talking when he, yeah. if he was doing a cup final and all that, he had a distinctive. Well, he went he voice. went through the roof with me when he took over Ireland and done what he'd done with yeah, Ireland. Yeah, when he'd done that, yeah. And he, especially the FA turned him down. That's and, why I blanked him, didn't Yeah, and that, I mean, that side of it, and then he went and done what he'd done with Ireland, fair play to him, you know. He was a cult era. I mean, I, yeah. I loved Jack Charlton. I thought yeah, he was so. a great football yeah. icon. Do you know what I mean? It was. Um... But he wasn't a football icon. <laughs> <laughs> he, was he was for a certain, certain you've style of football. You got to be a footballer. Like. You got to be a footballer. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was. He, he was like he become iconic. Yeah. Because of what he'd done, done in Ireland. Ireland. Yeah, yeah. In Leeds, everybody say, "Oh, Jack Charlton," yeah. but in Chelsea, they wouldn't. They go, "Oh, David Webb." Yeah. You know? That yeah. kind of stuff. That rivalry between Chelsea and Leeds was a legend. I mean, we'd admit that yeah. Jack Charlton weren't a Bobby Moore, uh, 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 like a Bobby Moore in England style like that, was he? No. no. As no. a defender, no. Well, he never pretended to be. He didn't no. want to be. But, and he was honest enough to, to, to say for the last England goal, he was telling Bobby Moore to kick it in the plate, you know, kick it in row Z, which is the term I hate. Uh, <laughs> but he was doing that. But. Um, he showed his true worth, and sadly, I see him at uh, Gordon Banks' funeral, and I think one of his relations was sitting with him, yeah, talking because, and talking yeah. him through it. Yeah, which was really sad.